Division with Base 10 Blocks. I see a video. This is the most popular video on YouTube for Division with Base 10 Blocks. Blind leading the blind. Here is four. Is contained in 532. How many times? Alright, well let's just set that up. You'll see I have some pieces over there. And it also goes to show you don't want to model every single problem. But you do want to do something like this because... You know, if you do like 12 into 132, that works out all nice and even. But what if it doesn't work out nice and even, like this problem? Well, you can still do it, and you can see that what we're talking about is a rectangle. Four across, the whole rectangle is four, 532. How far down is it? And, again, how many fours are there? Okay, so, let's see here. I'm going to pause for a second and set this up. But you can see, all I'm going to do is take the blocks that you see on the board there, well, the ones on the right, anyway, and set them up so you can see what's going on. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is get out my 100 strips. And I'm going to have to count out 532 blocks. Okay, so right there is 400. And can you see that what I have there is 100 fours? If you look across, if you talk about the across distance, it's 100 fours. It's four across and 100 down. Okay, so that's the first, and kids love these problems, by the way, I mean, like, they're a pain for, to do presentations with and so forth, but kids love the big problems, and they love getting out these pieces, because it's bigger and bigger, is funner, I guarantee it, and little kids can do this, you can do this with first and second graders, doesn't have, don't have to wait till fourth, fifth, sixth grade, okay, and you can see it, I mean, even I'm zoomed out, it still barely fits on the, on the board here, all right, so now I have figured out that the most fours I can put in there is I can't put five, right? I can't put, I'm counting fours out. If you cut across, four, 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 there's a hundred of them. They're in groups of ten. You can even see the white lines going across. And for those of you wondering, uh, scotch tape, <laughs> no magnets. I just put in the scotch tape and you can't see the scotch tape. All right, so what have I done? I've seen that I can get a hundred fours out of that. So I'm going to show the notation later. First, we're going to model it. Okay, so now I've put in all the tens that I've traded in. And that's going to be 120 of them. Look, you can't even see them all. Let's, <laughs> we're going to have to zoom out. Let's move this camera over a little bit. And maybe tilt down a little bit. We know those are hundreds right there. And zoom out. There you go. You can see them all. Like I'm off, off the board. Let's go this way a little bit more. All right, so now what do I have? Well, I have four going, I'm going four across. And now I'm 30 down. That's 120. That's the most I can get out of it. You'll see this in the symbols in a second because you're right. But let's talk about it first and use blocks first. Now, what's left? Well, then I, you can see that little pile of green over there. Those are the units. There's going to be 12 that I can stick in there. This one comes out with no remainder nicely. Okay, so now I have to take and stick those 12 in there. Really simple. Okay, so there they all are. Let's zoom in so you can see what's going on there. See them? You can see the tape now. All right, so there's the 12 down there. So that's all it is. If it's four across, it's going to be one of the hundreds, four of the blues, or excuse me, three of the blues, and three of the green ones down. 133 down. Okay, because three times four, you see that bottom rectangle right there? That rectangle is four by three. That's 12. All right, let's put the, and, I, and see, drawing a picture of this would make life oh so much easier so you see what you're doing. But you notice I'm not making, right, because people that only can think in, in squares and flats, and because that's all the pieces you ever get, uh, are going to be seriously handicapped with this problem. All right, let's zoom in a little bit and we'll look up here. Okay, so you can see it and I'm going to draw it again. Okay, so there's my drawing. <laughs> right? Just a quick line drawing for the hundreds the groups of tens, and the units. Now let's talk about it. And I'm going to put some lines in, and we'll see the notation like you're used to seeing. But there it is. That's all it is. Four across, 133 down. They can see it. Now it's going to make sense when I show them what we're doing here. All we're basically going to do is do some multiplication and keep track of subtraction. Okay, and what we're finding is, what's the biggest, or what's the most amount, what's the biggest number we can get in there. What you guys want to do is, oh, how many fours and five? It's not fours and five. Because <laughs> there is only one four and five, but that's how many fours in 500. Well, there's a hundred of them. All right, let's show that. Pretty simple. 
And now you see the, the line and the line is the same. How many is left down there? Let's count. I don't know how to, right? Technically, I don't even have to know how to multiply or subtract. I'm just counting. I'm going to count four of those red ones. I know they're hundreds. And then I'm going to look down there and see what's left. Well, what's left down there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and some one units. It's going to be, hmm, let's count. Forty. Can we count by fours? Four, eight, twelve. Okay, so that's a hundred and twenty because we're counting tens. Those are twelve tens. And then twelve more units. So let's see, what number would that be? That subtraction should have been super easy, right? Because nothing dynamic about it. Right? We have enough everywhere. All right, so take four hundreds away from five hundreds, I'm left with one hundred. I don't have to take any away from those thirty, and I don't have to take anything away from those two. So one hundred and thirty-two is left. Now I'm going to count out tens. How many fours can I count out of thirty-two? Oh, wait a minute. How many fours can I count out of a hundred thirty-two? Hmm. Well, I can count uh, groups of ten. Let's, do you see them down there? you see them? I can count, and if they had their blocks, their hands on the pieces, on these, well, I wouldn't call these blocks, on these strips, then they'd be able to easily see that, yep, there are four, or excuse me, three groups of four there. It's four across, because we're counting fours, is what we're basically doing here. We're seeing how many fours are contained in 532, or 532. Look, I'm being lazy with my English. Uh, let's see here. Okay, well, that's going to be 120. And you know what? It's time to move my picture. I'm going to move it over, because now that I look at my shot, I can see I have plenty of room. <laughs> so they don't need to be right there. But do you see the black lines line up? And the kids go, oh, that's what those are. And what's left down there? Now it's easy to see down there. I can just count 4, 8, 12. There's 12 left down there. Or I can do the subtraction where I see, of course, 132. 132 minus 120 is 12. Oops, and then as I look at it, I forgot to put the notation in. That how many of them? That was three. That was three. I forgot to put the three in. So let's put that three in there. And now you can see the drawing that I did on the side there. So you can see it's four across and 130. Ugh, three down. And I forgot to put it in there. That's funny. So now it's not 13. That's 130. I just haven't put the zeros in. Notice where the place value needs to line up. It has to. Okay, and we can see four times 100. That's the red square or the red rectangle. Uh, four times 30. That's the blue. Rectangle, 4 across, 30 down. Right? When we're doing multiplication, it's across and up, but we're doing division here, so it's across and down. Um, then what's left? Well, now it's really easy. I just have 12. How many 4s and 12? Any little kid should be able to do that. Okay, well, it's just going to be uh, 3 of them left, and then we're counting out 4s. Do I have to overthink this for you? You can do lots more explanation if you want to, but there it is. There's nothing left to count. So, what we did is we counted first, we cut it into strips, we're not going to use these guys. Why would you? It's silly to try to use these guys. Alright, so, I have there a box of, a, of 400, a box of 120, and a box of 12. And I took all of that away from 532, and when you add up 400, 120, and 12, of course you get... 532. We used to do this with expanded notation too, but I'm not going to do that today. Or you can see the 500 and the plus the 30 plus the 2. And anyway, but we'll skip it. But I'm going to do one more little drawing here so you can see what's going on. Absolutely should be clear. Oh, God, how about artwork? <laughs> All right. So now I hope you can see there it is with lots of drawings. Play with the blocks first, play with the pieces first, manipulatives first, get the right manipulatives out, and then you can do drawings. And look, there it is, you know, mimicking what you see there. Here it is, more uh, abstract. How's that, how's that artwork there? And can you see that 400 plus 120 plus 12 is 532, and that it's four across in those drawings? And that when I do the two sides of the rectangle, four times 100, 400, four times 30, 120, 4 times 3, 12. And then we just show it with symbols. This, is, this is, shouldn't be difficult for them to see the algorithm. And again, I have to stress, you don't want to show every single problem like this. You want them to get the idea of it. Give them three or four examples. 
where you show them, then they show you three or four examples of problems like this that are dynamic that you have to break it up where it doesn't work out nicely. Because I can put one, I can f whip one up there really quickly where it's like 12 into 132 or some other problem like that where it works out nicely. But what happens when it doesn't work out nicely? Can we still do it? Of course we can still do it. Is it the same concept? It's the same concept, concept-based teaching. That's what we're going for here that they understand the concepts. And I see some comments in this other lady's videos about, anyway, derogatory comments. Look, she's showing you a better way to go. And I tell you, kids hate long division because they don't understand it. I can tell you 105 stories about how in five minutes I can clear it up by showing the blocks. And I don't have to use a problem like this. I can do a simple problem. Let me show you one that goes together really quickly where they get the idea, where they get the concept of it. And then when you do a problem like this, because this is not where you want to start, right? You want to start simple with something like, you know, 12 is contained in 132. And then move on to more problems like that and then go on to problems like this. Okay, but this should make it absolutely positively clear what we're doing. And like I said, get these strips out if you have them. You can make them if you want to. Kids love them. They do. I <laughs> mean, big problems like this, it's a joy. The little kids have fun. It takes a while to build them, but see, once they get the concept, then they can do the symbols quickly and easily, and they understand what they're doing. They understand what they're doing. It's not just rote memorization. And if, oh, let me do one more thing. What if it was 533? Then what? baby step in your way there, one step at a time. So what's the next concept? The next concept would be talking about remainders. So the first thing they'll see is R1. Can you see that that one is gonna remain outside the rectangle? And you can't see it on the strips, but there would be a one down there. But you can certainly see it in my drawings that there's one left. Well, what do we do with the one? Well, I can just write remainder one, or I can say, oh, how about uh, it's one out of those four? Right? Because people do, forget, what are they supposed to do? I mean, you, you'll see kids, right, 1 over 133, because they can't remember where to put it, They're just, right, because it's just a rule, they don't know what the heck they're doing. But if there were four Boy Scouts, they had 533 marbles, <laughs> and they were dividing up the marbles, each one would get, uh, oh, marbles is a bad example, see? Well, I'll have to go with pineapples, let's go with pineapples, because marbles, you can't cut a, a marble up. There'd be one marble left over that nobody gets. But with a pineapple, now we can show, so that, you know, the marble would be the remainder story and the pineapple would be your cut the pineapple up. How many pieces uh, would you have to cut your pineapple into? You'd have to cut it into four pieces. Let me show you. Okay, so can you see that we've done everything the same, the symbols are the same, except now I have 13 down there. Well, how many fours can I count out of 13? I can only count still three out of the 13 and there'll be one left. All right, so there it is. The one, the one, everybody sees the one now. It's the, there in the symbols, it's there in the drawings. And now I have to do something with that one, okay, because that's not complete. So I'm going to say, look, I'm going to take that last pineapple, if we're talking about a pineapple story, uh, where the Boy Scouts have divided up their 533 pineapples into four groups. Well, we're going to take that one pineapple. What do you need? And the kids will say, I don't, a knife. Or a lot of kids will say, just eat it. Just give it back to the farmer. Just throw it away. Nope, we got to divide up that last one too. Well, then how many pieces do we have to cut it into? Four. Why? Because there's four Boy Scouts. So, 133, remainder one, or 133 and a quarter. One divided among those four. So there it is. Done. Simple. Now, the next step, of course, is converting a quarter into decimals. And um, that's beyond the scope of what I want to do here. Now I want to just show you one quick thing where we're going to show concept over here. And look at all that room I've got over there on the left, so I'm going to use it. Like I said, start off simple and easy. How many fours are contained in 12? Three. Can you see them there? Can you, can you see them? Do you see the three fours there? Let me zoom in just in case you don't see them. There. That's it. Four across, three down. Okay, then, oh look, there's one that's really easy to see. Let's get that out of the picture, so we're just looking at that right here. All right, uh, there is 132 divided by 11, or 11 is contained in 132 12 times. See the 110? Then what's left? 22. See the, all right, and then we can do the same thing, showing the exact same thing. If I did 133, there'd be one left outside, right? Two left, three left, whatever. Right? 
3 divided among 11, 5 divided among 11, whatever you could, you know, depending on the number you want to put in there, so that you teach the concept of remainders, and it's not just a little bit. For the older, younger kids don't care. Older kids, they should know dividend, divisor, and quotient. Okay, I think I've gone ahead and done exactly what I wasn't supposed to do, which is belabor the point. Just make it simple and fast and easy. Draw these things. Have a good time. Play. Get the concepts down, and your kids will get it. Guarantee it. Okay, CrudenRamonesHouseOfMath.com for more. Also, you can just take uh, a look at Long Division with Base 10 Blocks. If you search that, you'll find me too. Okay.